welcome to the channel. Now you may recall the Winglands video where I interviewed a gentleman from the organisation. I got it wrong, I called it Wiz, that's the element of this organisation that helps them. It's Flying for Freedom and I'm finally at Over Farm and I'm with Catherine. Cat, is that how you like to be Kat, called? Yes, yeah, that's Kat's great. fine. Um, Cat, please in introduce yourself and explain what Flying for Freedom is all about. So Flying for Freedom is a an organisation that was set up about eight years ago um, with the, the aim to introduce wounded engine sick service personnel and veterans to fly flexible microlights as part of their rehabilitation from injury. Uh, so how many aircraft have you actually got that, so, that support these um, wounded engine sick and veterans? Yeah, so we've got uh, we've got four aircraft at the moment. We've just okay. had one don donated to us. Um, I, so. I notice they've all got different names. And yes. All. So looking at the uh, the aircraft, they're all named differently, but are the controls standardised throughout or are they all modified in different ways? Yeah, so what we've done is we've modified them all the same ad adaptive ways and uh, we've given them a hand throttle and an extra um, hand brake as well right. um, we've tried to do all of them the same so that there's no uh, individual has got to fly a specific one we've okay. got the option to, yeah. to move around there yeah. so flying for freedom with uh, a military bias should I say yes. um, clearly you've tried uh, and achieved many um, extreme expeditions um, there's a video on your YouTube channel there is a YouTube channel and I'll link that in the description you've been to some really cold places haven't you yes we've been to uh, we've been a couple of trips to northern Sweden to learn to fly these on on skis which wow. was um, definitely uh, definitely a learning experience so this this event is all about bringing all uh, as many of the uh, the wounded in veterans together yeah. to fly all the aircraft yeah. Uh, what is the what is the focus of this weekend? We wanted to get people um, together again. Some some haven't even met each other, and they're learning to fly through the organisation. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to uh, get them together and then start off doing sort of expeditions again next year. So we've done over the sort of the course of sort of flying freedoms. Uh, uh, time we've been around for about eight years now. Okay. We've done a couple of trips, sort of for, mainly around the coast of the UK. We've done uh, uh, um, an expedition northern France, doing the battlefield tours, okay. um, and then to the south of France. Because yeah. um, you made a video of that one as well, yes, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we've um, we've had some really really good. I'll leave a card up here to that video. <laughs> and then sort of the last couple of years, things have died down, obviously with COVID. So yeah. we're trying to get everyone back together again, get them flying. Um, and then hopefully next year we're going to get an expedition to Jersey. Wow. So uh, hopefully uh, yeah. that will come sort of flying along the North Flint coast uh, into in Jersey. So hi everyone, um, you'll probably notice I'm not in my normal aircraft or the Quantum. We're with Jace, who is uh, one of the pilots. <laughs> you wait, there's the cameras there, mate. <laughs> And we're just going up in one of the aircraft. It's just going to give me a very short flight to see what these aircraft are like and how they've been modified. So, uh, yeah, Jace, all yours. Okie dog. And we've got an idle, which is good. Trim is coming up. Will be a good shift work check, can you? Hey. <laughs> Anyone that follows my channels knows I like a good checklist. <laughs> good. So, Jace, now we're out of the circuit. Um, why is flying for freedom quite important to you? Um, it's a... For me it's a bit of a search. Uh, I've, I've flown in my previous career quite a lot and I never thought I was going to go back to flying or actually if I'd ever want to go back to flying. Okay. And when the opportunity came up that Flying for Freedom were looking for new pilots I'd have a sort of long conversation with myself and my wife about whether or not I was interested. Yeah. Um, and it was like, well, let's just go give it a go, see what happens. So it, it's for me, it's like learning, flying. When I first started to fly many, many years ago as a teenager and all that sort of thing, it was fun. Yeah. And it was really enjoyable and I used to love it. And then obviously you go to, you fly for the military and it becomes work, it becomes a task and it's a, you have things to achieve. Yeah. And the fun disappears and you're flying for a reason absolutely and then you know go on ops and things the fun certainly isn't there because people are doing nasty things yeah um, so this was an opportunity one to see whether or not I could get in the air again and actually go flying 
Right. Um, and then see if it could develop into maybe actually enjoying things again. Yeah. And you're still in that feeling out ground at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've not experienced. I've, I've only got about. Uh, I think this will be maybe about 30 hours on uh, micro lights now. Um, so I'm very, very new to it. Very yeah. inexperienced in the micro light world. So I'm still learning. Everything's still a little bit uncomfortable, you know. Getting bumped <laughs> about, <laughs> feeling the thermals and the wind and things. I won't. I won't say go and try paramotoring then. <laughs> no. But this has been. This been. I find it quite exposing as well. When you sat up here, yeah, I'm comfortable at 500 feet. Yeah, I'm happy low level because that's my previous. Anything above that, I find quite unusual. And yeah. I'm still getting used to being so exposed. Yeah. as you are in one of these in a bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> so part of the emphasis of flying for freedom is about uh, enabling wounded, injured, injured and sick veterans and serving members of the armed forces to be able to fly. Um, and the gentleman that's with me now is Darren. Uh, Darren's had a very special moment of late and I'll, I'll bring him into shot now. You can see the grin already. So Darren, tell me what happened yesterday. Um, well, somehow I managed to fly uh, past my GST, general skills test. Congratulations. Thank you. But what makes your GST somewhat more special than uh, dare I say an able-bodied person? I think I think passing the GST is special for anyone. Yeah. Um, but I'm an amputee. I've got other disabilities as a result of a road traffic accident, and um, I never once dreamed that I would be able to get up and fly an airplane again. Yeah. It's it's something I always wanted to do as a child, but for one reason or another, it didn't happen. Yeah. And uh, then I found out about flying for freedom. How long ago was that? Um, well, my childhood, no, a long no. time. <laughs> I get no. the feeling from our conversations today you've never actually grown up. But, Correct. Um, how long ago did you get involved with Flying for Freedom? How did you realise that yeah, might be an avenue sure. to you actually learning to fly? Um, well, through losing my, my leg, uh, I joined an organisation called Blesma, British Limbless Ex Servicemen's Association. And they were appro approached by Flying for Freedom in uh, 2019 or towards the, the tail end of 2018. Yeah. Uh, looking for amputees uh, who maybe had an interest in flying and would like to come along and see if, if this is, this is uh, a sport for them. And I put my application in, never dreaming for a second that I'll get selected. Yeah. Uh, went through the interview process and... Uh, in March, or end of February, March 2020, uh, I found myself at Kemble Airfield learning to fly. Lockdown seems to have stopped a lot of people flying, yeah. but that clearly hasn't held you back by you achieving your GST yesterday. And I say from yeah. seeing you this morning, you just haven't stopped grinning all day, have you really? No, um, it's special. For those that have been watching the, the, the sort of video thus far, you'll, you'll realize that there's a flavor of this that actually Disability in aviation, it, it's an equaliser. I think you, what was the actual line you used earlier? Yeah, it's, I'm an amputee on my left side, above knee, very high amputation. My right leg is also damaged. So for me, walking around under the effects of gravity, it, it's difficult. My walking gait is awkward and sometimes painful. But when you're sitting in one of these, when you're up in the air, when you're flying, yeah. You're the same as anyone else. Nobody yeah. sees your disability. And we've just seen Ben take off, haven't we? Another you wouldn't amputee. know no. that you know he's got one working leg and one one uh, prosthetic leg. It's it's a fantastic equaliser. Yeah. So where will you be taking it um, after here? Where where do you want to take your flying? Or are you just happy that you're in the air on your, and able to fly on your own? Well, I would say the sky's the limit, but that's a bit corny. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, there's all sorts of things. And again, through the Flying for Freedom programme, there's expeditions that are planned. People are talking about potentially South Africa, America. I know there is a strong desire to get down to Antarctica yes. and really push things. And I would love to be part of something like that. Right. Life doesn't stop after, after disability. It's it doesn't. Just it's just different. I think I'll have to use that line. So Darren, thank you very much for, uh, for opening up to us as to how this has helped you fly again. And as you can see, Flying for Freedom is helping so many people get in the air. Flying is an equaliser to everybody. But it's interesting to hear the, the, your words about, do I want to go back to flying? Yeah. Because you've, you've literally had that career of, you will do in order to fly. Yes. And that just knocks it for six, I could imagine. Yeah, and the flying that you do, is has been you know at times exceedingly challenging yeah um, 
and also at times very rewarding. Yeah. Um, but you know what it's like working with the military. It's trying to get anything done can be quite hard work at times. Yeah. Also. Would so, you uh, Would you like me to fly you for a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I have control. You have control. How's that feel? <laughs> Not so bad. I've only been a passenger in one of these for uh, two or three times, I think. Yeah. Apart from learning, obviously, with the instructor in the back. But that was the advantage of um, having some previous. I could do a little bit of a shorter course. Yeah. I think it's very similar to me. I, I did the bridge straight to GST. So yeah. yeah. But I'd already had 20 hours on the sub 70 flex wing. Ah, uh, cool. And then did the. Uh, a bridge course to GST and PPL. Brilliant. So. The seven ball. Um, as I got airborne just before we went up, uh, Rob had uh, got airborne about five minutes beforehand, and yeah. then he radioed through it. It was just coming up, so we saw some of the surfers on it. Oh right, yes. yeah, yeah. First time I've seen that. It is pretty epic to see. So I get to look at the back of someone's head. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. I don't mean that in any disrespect, Jace. No. Nope. But I am mostly looking at the back of your head. <laughs> so those that may be able to see from my head cam, those that have watched my channel from the board chasers, this is how close over farm is. The board chasers location is just ahead over there, which is where we used to camp. So if you see the 240 foot pylon, oh, ahead, yeah. straight yeah. dead ahead, yeah. a little white building, yeah, still right, to yeah. the right, Visual. that's where we camp. Nice. So this we can take off and then follow the board all the way around. So another interview today and I feel very very fortunate that the individuals are willing to be put on camera and ask questions. Some of them are probably quite emotional questions um, but the whole point of aviation is as I've discovered with, with uh, Darren who I spoke to earlier is that flying is an equaliser. It doesn't matter where you've come from, what your issues are, once you're up there in the, in the sky flying is freedom. And we've got Ed. Now Ed please explain to me why aviation and flying for freedom has been so important in your life? So for me, um, I, I met um, uh, Luke, who's a part of Flying for Freedom. Okay. Um, and Luke just inspired me about flying. He told me the stories about the, 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 the learning, all the exams going through the process of learning. And as a child, I always dreamt about flying being yeah. able to fly yeah. and I always doubted my ability to think that I could fly yeah and Luke said why don't you give it a go yeah. um, and and I and I approached the charity and, mm -hmm. and I expressed that I was very very interested to go through the process of learning and um, obviously I was I was wounded in service um, and um, I, I, I followed my dreams went through the process and it wasn't easy for me I had to work very very hard at every stage um, to complete my flying and become a pilot um, and what I would say is, is if there is anybody out there who wants to learn how to fly who's a wounded serviceman definitely get in touch with the, with the charity and get a test flight um, it is so rewarding um, seeing I, the I, can, I can hear in your voice it's just, just the adventure the, the, the every flight is different yeah. and um, and, and the learning of it is 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 ma and amazing. You're learning every flight, every time you're learning. You're picking everyone's brains about you know different aspects of the flight, yeah. Um, uh, and and yeah, I, I love it. It's absolutely phenomenal. So, what opportunities has flying for freedom given you that you would have never have dreamed of in in normal general micro lighting? Okay, so we um, flying for freedom do, do expeds um, each year. Expeditions. Expeditions, yeah. 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 So, um, so flying around the country, um, possibly getting out to other countries. The abilities of people flying. So I was learning by other. In pilots, um, their their flying skills. Yeah. Um, so it's great that we can um, get around the country. We can meet other wounded servicemen and give them test flights, uh, and maybe inspire other people to 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 start to learn how to fly. Yeah. I never thought I'd be standing here today, saying I'm a qualified pilot. Yeah. You know, I've still got an awful long way to go. We um, never stop learning. Do we? we never stop learning, yeah. and um, 
yeah i love it i'll absolutely love it yeah um, seeing you fly today um w was amazing thank you uh, in, in terms of just when you landed the grin you could see the grin outside the helmet and, yeah and it was great to see yeah there's a lot of conversations today which i'm not going to put on camera because it's a it's, it's quite an emotive place here in that everyone's got their own battles and demons as it were but it seems very much that flying for freedom has given many servicemen um, both currently serving or, or retired the opportunity to uh, find aviation. So cool, clear to the right. I forgot how heavy these things are. Yeah. Well, Jace, I, I really do appreciate you kind of uh, opening up about the uh, the reasons for flying and, and not flying, if that makes sense. No, no problem. And uh, I really appreciate you taking me up flying. Yeah, you're welcome. For those that might not know, uh, I've actually met Jace before. So if you've seen my uh, Winglands video, uh, Jace flew in with Ginge, who uh, who I interviewed in that one. So uh, it's just good to meet you again, buddy. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's a scary small world in the micro eye world, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding that. Yeah, I've not been to Orbit Farm before. For the first time I flew down yesterday. Yeah, where is it? I've lost it now. Uh, so at 12 o'clock, uh, yeah. just left of the pole. Uh, you've got the village at half, yep. past, half past 11. Yep. You've got the tree line just to the right back, that's yep. the hill. Oh, I've seen, yeah, it's got it now. Yeah. Yeah, it's come around quite a bit. That, that, is, that is tailwind. Yeah, I'm going to go one nine. And uh, up front, go Charlie Lima, Fox Road Juliet is changing runway direction one nine. Downwind. tell me yeah good right so my third and final interview for the day is with another ed because apparently two eds are better than one <laughs> that's what they say <laughs> i wouldn't go with the other one though well, we wouldn't go with the other one fine <laughs> well, it depends where i order them really he might <laughs> be right. before or after you so uh so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll go with that one yeah um so ed's kindly agreed to um to chat to me today because your story off camera is is not a, a standard story of uh, any serviceman uh, and yeah. I think the only person that can explain it most is yourself so if you're, if you're yeah, happy to. No, absolutely yeah so um, I was an army physio at the end of my career actually I was a musician in the household cavalry prior to that okay. um, and then was an army physio and I was at Headley Court with basically all the guys who were battle injured came to Headley Court to be rehabilitated uh, from a physio point of view that's what we did yeah. but my operational experience was that I was um, frontline Iraq in, in Basra Palace in 2007 and it was the first time a physio had been put really on the kind of with teeth arms that that kind of close to yeah. the action as what they yeah. normally kind of And I know that time that was very heavily rocketed wasn't yeah, it? Yeah well we were trying to close down Basra Palace so uh, it was it was trying to get back to the cob um, and as the as a physio you go there to kind of the, the analogy was to keep the football pit for the football, football players on the pitch yeah so it would be, you know, strapping up late at night for the guys to go out to, to continue their, their, their job. Mm. Unfortunately, what, what transpired, unfortunately for us, was that we saw so many casualties coming through that my role as a physio was slightly negated and that I was basically a medic. Um, so we had a really small medic, medical team there. Um, and at one point, you know, I'd almost say we were overwhelmed with casualties. And so that then, unfortunately for me, is that as an augmentee, um, and if you don't know what an augmentee is, you don't belong to those units anyway. You're kind of parachuted in, so you didn't really know people from the units. Um, and then you're parachuted out again. So, from my point of view, the uh, the what would normally transpire as a process of returning to normal life didn't really happen. So, 48 hours after me being in Iraq, getting mortared actually myself, I was having a, a prawn sandwich with my parents in a Cotswold pub. Um, and so, there's no there's no Decompression, Decompression didn't, exist, didn't yeah. exa exist for me at all. So in terms of getting PTSD, um, it was almost a, you could have just written it. Yeah. Uh, and so, and that, that's kind of what transpired through the, a period of years. I knew something was wrong. Mm. Um, I, I didn't want to say it was PTSD, but as soon as somebody said, you've got PTSD, it was a kind of, 
I'm glad you've told me. I'm glad I know, I kind of knew, but it was like, oh, wow, okay, right. Yeah. Now I know, need to deal with it. So in terms of, the, and then I've, I've had just years and years of treatment, and, and actually my most recent bout, bout of treatment for uh, PTSD is just coming to an, an, an end, and I've got another six month wait for the, the next bout yeah. of treatment. It sounds like a very, very standardized question I've asked the others, but flying for freedom is, cl- is clearly very important to you. Yeah. What has that enabled you to do to get back to almost what you can't ever say it's a normal life after Yeah, PTSD. my life has completely changed. Um, I'm no longer a physio, per se. Um, I no longer a, hold a, the, a clinical role. I tried that after leaving the military and it just really didn't work at all. Um, and so what Flying Freedom has done, it's, it's given you that challenge. If you think of a military person, we, we live on challenges, demanding roles, responsibility and this is what flying for freedom has done in a much more gentle way yeah. and to be a pilot you need every every attribute to be a pilot is exactly what you're kind of wanting to be when you're in the military you've got to be professional you've got to look out for others you've got to you know you're in charge of a flying air, an aircraft mm. um, and so all of these aspects that you you didn't know before flying for freedom they give you the training and then they say, right, you're going solo. And then you pass your test. And now you're part of the team flying around the country or flying internationally. I've flown from Gloucester, this airport, this airfield right now, to Toulouse in my, in my microlight. And it's that challenge of n- just navigating across the channel in a single aircraft, a single uh, engine aircraft like a microlight. Mm. What not a lot of even microlight pilots have done yeah. to go and do that within two years of qualifying. Uh, to fly down to Toulouse, yeah. to fly around France, the Somme, which we've, we've done previously, and other guys have gone up to Norway and flown fly, in, in winter conditions. Yeah. So it's these kind of testing elements, which they do seamlessly, I have to say, and challenge the individuals of what they used to be challenged yeah. like in a non-confronting manner. So you get your adrenaline rush, you feel mm-hmm. safe, you're, fi- you're pushing boundaries. And it's those kind of elements that you are completely missing in what is a now a very different life to what you had It's interesting previously. to see your facial expression from when you're talking about times of old to what you've achieved now. Yeah. And you've gone from a very focused face to a one with a smile. So, well, that's right. Well, it, it does, you know, weekends like this, we get, we get together probably, not enough in my opinion, but we get together probably two or three times a year yeah. um, just for weekends. And we, uh, we plan, when non, non-COVID, we probably plan two week trips, uh, two single week trips or a big, double week trip um, and it's it's that's they, they're the times you come together off camera we talked about the military banter and it's just seem it's just goes straight into it yeah. and the, the, the but there is a slight difference this isn't the kind of the harsh military banter this is tongue-in-cheek fun humorous banter that yeah. unfortunately civilians don't tend to get um, <laughs> uh, but the military we just fall straight back into it and it's it's just a, a nice learning environment we bounce off each other hands up if we make a mistake yeah. um, it's that kind of you know we all learn from each other we're the, if you look at the majority of the pilots we we've got such a big turnover at the moment with pilots coming through the majority of the pilots are probably newer pilots than the older pilots the more experienced ones so we're they're always learning yeah. and we're having this the, ch- the chats and you know on an evening over a barbecue and a beer on, on an yeah. evening that's the learning point and I'm, I'm very much picking up on that today I'd really like to thank you because sometimes talking about events of old are quite traumatic and yeah. I really appreciate you no, being able um, to, to speak to me today about it and how much it's put a grin on your face <laughs> that you've taken adversity and, and pushed it through to something that's, uh, that's given you pleasure. Yeah, Organization, um, like, organisations like this are, 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 are absolutely fantastic and it's, it gives uh, veterans um, at that, at that kind of window of, of some enjoyment. Well, Ed, thank you very no much for, for agreeing to speak to me. I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, I say it's been a fantastic day here at Over Farm with the Flying for Freedom crew. They've, they've made me feel very, very welcome. Even got the flight in. So, um, Jason, thank you very much for that earlier. We'll wrap this video up here. So until next time, everybody, fly safe.